We're taking a look back at some of the most impactful local stories of the past year. The year began with the tragic loss of a Fountain police officer who died serving his community. Our Diane Derby reports. The picture in my mind is him with his family, always holding his son. Because that's what he learned from his family. And I saw it. a strong core. And that's what Julian exemplified. In February, Fountain Police Officer Julian Becerra fell 40 feet from the South Academy Bridge over Fountain Creek. Officer Becerra spent a little more than a week in the hospital before dying from his injuries. Julian was the ultimate quiet professional. He came to work every day. He did his job. He did policing the right way. And you never in four and a half years got a complaint, got a use of force had anything but praise for his work as a quiet professional. Officer Becerra was assigned to the patrol division as a canine officer. Before joining Fountain PD, he served with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. He left behind a wife and two children. They said there was no way Yemi has a chance. The Colorado Springs would never vote for a black immigrant with big dreams of unifying this city. After a too close to call election in April, in May, voters in Colorado Springs elected Yemi Mobilade to be the city's mayor. Mobilade made history as the city's first elected black mayor. Mayor Mobilade replaced John Southers, who was term limited. For three years, I have tried to forgive you, but I can't. In May, justice came for Gannon Stauk. The nine-year-old El Paso County boy was murdered by his stepmom, Letitia Stauk, three years earlier. A jury found Letitia Stauk guilty on several counts, including first-degree murder. I'll never get to see my boy again. All we can do is take what we're given and move forward and try to find the joy in our lives and not let the pain overcome us. Letitia Stauk was sentenced to serve two life sentences without the possibility of parole, plus an additional 13 years. The following month, a plea deal was announced in the Club Q shooting that left five people dead in Colorado Springs. The shooter pleaded guilty to five counts of first-degree murder, 46 counts of attempted murder, and no contest to two bias-motivated crimes. He was sentenced to five consecutive life sentences plus 48 years for a total of 2,208 years in prison. There's no words, there's no prison sentence, there's nothing that can be done uh, to, to, to make these holes uh, whole. The owners of Club Q announced that the club will not reopen at its old location. Instead, a new venue known as the Q will open at the Satellite Hotel in Southeast Colorado Springs. In June, a community considered to be a food desert suffered a major blow when the King Supers at South Academy Boulevard and Hancock Expressway was forced to temporarily close after asbestos was found in some floor tiles. Local food banks stepped up to help the community and King Supers supported them with donations. The asbestos was cleaned up and the newly remodeled store reopened to customers in November, five months after it closed. In late September, another trial involving a young victim in Colorado Springs, Joshua Johnson, charged with the brutal murder of his coworker, Riley Whitelaw. It happened in the break room of a Northwest Side Walgreens. She was just 17 years old. Her legacy of being a kind and loving person will live on through her family and her friends. Johnson was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In October, a story broke in Fremont County that would have far-reaching impacts across southern Colorado and capture headlines across the country. Bodies improperly disposed of at the Return to Nature funeral home in Penrose. In the end, investigators would find the remains of 190 people in that facility. People who used it waiting and wondering if their loved ones were among them. Just thinking about him being there in that mess has been devastating to me. Um, you know. The owners of that funeral home arrested in Oklahoma and sent back to Colorado for prosecution. They face hundreds of counts of abuse of a corpse, fraud, and money laundering. 
Also in October, a coal train derailed north of Pueblo, causing the partial collapse of a railroad bridge and forcing the closure of I-25 for nearly four days. A driver in a semi-truck that was passing under the bridge when the derailment and collapse happened was killed. He was identified as La Follette Henderson from Compton, California. It was a normal morning, and then all of a sudden, in November, a man was shot to death in broad daylight on a busy sidewalk just outside the El Paso County Courthouse in Colorado Springs. The suspect was quickly arrested. According to an arrest affidavit, Shaquille Brown told police the victim had assaulted him at a bar and had threatened him on social media. The affidavit says Brown told police he feared for his life and that's why he shot the victim. Also in November, a quadruple shooting that left three people dead rocked the normally quiet Custer County community. Investigators learning the shooting was the result of a property dispute between neighbors over an easement. The shooting prompted a more than day-long manhunt that ended when the suspect, Hanmi Clark, was arrested in New Mexico. Those killed were identified as Rob Gears, Beth Wade Gears, and James Dalton. Patty Dalton was also shot but survived. Diane Derby, News 5.